Welcome everyone. My name is Sylvia Damerio and I am a PhD student at the Zernike Institute for Advanced Materials at the University of Groningen. And my talk of today will be about the spin hole magnetoresistance in the multi-domain thin films of the antiferromagnet calcium ferrite. Uh, I would like to start with a very brief introduction of the spin hole magnetoresistance effect. This effect is found at the interface between a heavy metal and a magnetic material, and it's due to the spin hole effect in the heavy metal. So when we have a charge current going through a heavy metal, due to the large spin hole recoupling, uh, the uh, spin carriers can be deflected at different edges of the material, resulting in a net uh, spin current, which is perpendicular to the charge current. And this will also lead to a spin accumulation at the edges of the heavy metal, where the direction of the spins is perpendicular to the spin current. If now we uh, sandwich this heavy metal with a magnetic material, that can be the injection of the spin current in the magnetic material, even if it's an insulator. And uh, this injection depends on the direction of the order parameter in the magnetic material. So in the case of a ferromagnet here in red, uh, if the magnetization is uh, perpendicular to the direction of the spin accumulation, then the spin current can be injected and this will result in a, a large resistance state in the heavy metal. On the other hand, uh, when the magnetization is collinear to the direction of the spin accumulation, due to the inverse the spin hole effect, there will be a, a spin current back into the heavy metal, uh, inducing a small resistance state. If we now consider the case of an antiferromagnet, now usually the order parameter here is the nil vector, which is uh, which aligns perpendicular to the magnetic field. So where we had a large resistance state for, for a ferromagnet, we will observe a small resistance state in an antiferromagnet and vice versa. So the result is that in this experiment, by rotating the magnetic field, we can measure an angular dependent uh, magnetoresistance in the heavy metal. And this has been uh, proven by uh, several experiments where, uh, which were done, for example, here you see with the ferrimagnet uh, YIG at the interface with uh, platinum. And what uh, people observe is a, a sinusoidal modulation of the longitudinal and also of the transverse uh, resistivity in, in YIG uh, platinum bilayers. And if the experiment is repeated, but in this case with an antiferromagnet, you can find, for example, alpha iron oxide or nickel oxide, the modulation will, be the, will have the opposite sign with respect to the case of the uh, YIG. And in uh, transverse configuration, as I was saying, there is also sinusoidal modulation, but in this case, it has a 45 degree phase shift. So um, uh, we uh, perform this pinhole magnetoresistance experiment at the interface between platinum and, and calcium ferrite. Uh, calcium ferrite is an antiferromagnet uh, which has a uh, uh, uniaxial anisotropy. So all the spins are, uh, iron spins are aligned along the B axis, which is here outside of the plane of the slide. And what is interesting about this material is that at uh, 200 K, it orders in this uh, magnetic structure here, which is termed the B uh, spin arrangement, where uh, it shows alternating chains of, uh, of uh, spins being up, down, up, down along the C axis. And uh, here you can see the, uh, the exchange interaction between spins in, in octahedral environment that share edges, it's antiferromagnetic. But, but interestingly, uh, below 150K, another spin arrangement has been uh, me measured, uh, which is termed the A uh, phase. And in this, uh, in this structure, the, the, the exchange interaction between edge sharing of Taedra goes from being uh, antiferromagnetic to ferromagnetic. So this is again antiferromagnetic, but it has a double period modulation along the C axis. And uh, exactly how the coexistence between these two magnetic structure is not fully understood. Uh, in some reports, it seems that they coexist down to low temperature in a, in a full broad uh, range in a, um, term, with a phase transition, which is a first order type. Uh, while in other reports, it seems that the A structure is the ground state at low temperature and B only exists as a excitation in a narrow range of temperature around the mid uh, temperature. So what we wanted to do is utilize the spin hole magnetoresistance experiment to gain more information into the order parameter and, and the magnetic behavior of this material. 
Uh, the samples that we have been using for performing these experiments are thin films of calcium ferrite grown by means of post laser deposition on titanium oxide 110 substrates. And as you can see here, uh, our domains, our films are not a continuous uh, single domain film, but they are made of multiple uh, structural domains, which are uh, very easily identifiable by the topography of the AFM uh, image. Uh, we characterize in detail this uh, type of domains by means of EBSD, and uh, if you want more information on that, I can answer some questions. But uh, to the sake of this talk, uh, what is important is that all the domains have uh, this, are characterized as these needle-like crystals, and the long axis of the needles is correspond to the magnetic easy axis of the material. So for all the domains, the magnetic easy axis is in the plane of the film. So what we did was building different kind of devices, all bar devices. Uh, some are larger, so about 100 micrometer in size, and cover a broad area with uh, many of these domains, and they are positioned in a random position of the sample. On the other hand, we also made a single domain devices, which are localized at a single domain. So here we will have a case where the current direction is always um, parallel to the magnetic easy axis of the domain. And first, I would like to show some results of our uh, in-plane measurements of the multi-domain devices. So here, uh, we will have the field which always rotate in the uh, plane between the current and the transfer direction of the bar. And as you can see, when we uh, measure at 5 Kelvin, we observe a sinusoidal modulation, which has a maximum at uh, minus 45 degrees, which would correspond to anti ferromagnetic like uh, behavior of the material. And if we increase the temperature, what we start seeing is that this modulation starts to disappear and it's almost absent around 100, uh, 120 Kelvin. And when we increase even more the temperature uh, above, even above the nil temperature, we observe a positive modulation, so paramagnetic or ferromagnetic like modulation. Um, so the large, uh, the large uh, devices are characterized by a crossover from negative to positive uh, angular dependent magneto resistance. Whereas if we measure the single domain devices, here you can see the modulation of 5 Kelvin is again uh, sinusoidal, uh, but it has a maximum of 45 degrees, which, which means that this is a positive-like uh, modulation. And if we increase the temperature at uh, 100 30 and then again 300K, we observe that this modulation doesn't uh, change sign. So the modulation is always positive and it's characterized by a larger amplitude in the, in the order, above the nil temperature than in the order state. So to understand a little more about what was going on uh, with this material, we uh, made a simple theoretical model that tries to describe the, the behavior uh, of the SMR. And this model is based on an Hamiltonian, which has a Zeeman term, which depends on the direction and the strength of the applied field, uh, an exchange term, which uh, describes the uh, exchange interaction between the spins, and two uh, anisotropy terms, which take into account the easy plane and the uniaxial anisotropy uh, of the material. And what we define is a geometry where uh, the two antiferromagnetic sublattices are identified by two angles, uh, which are phi and theta. Uh, theta is the in-plane angle and phi the out-of-plane angle. So um, how to describe calcium ferrite correctly? This uh, is a simple theoretical model. So with simple, I mean that it takes into account uh, one unique uh, exchange interaction, which is identified by this exchange field, which is isotropic. but Calcium ferrite actually has a bit more complicated structure because people have found that there are at least uh, five, if not seven different exchange interactions between iron spins. But uh, what has been found is that uh, for both the iron in the two uh, crystallographic positions, iron one and iron two, there are always four interactions with uh, irons of a different type and two interactions with iron of the same type. And in particular, the one with iron of different types, which are here J3 and J4, are the largest ones. So uh, the exchange in general in this material is uh, dominated by uh, J3 and J4. And as a result, we can uh, simplify our model and take into account only these two interactions. And this will bring us a value of exchange field of about 287 uh, Tesla. 
And from other literature reports, we can also estimate the implant anisotropy and the um, uniaxial anisotropy. And this will lead us with a spin flop field of about five Tesla. So if we put in these values in our model, we can observe that when the field is applied along the current direction uh, in the plane of the film, uh, for a seven Tesla field, which is the one used in our experiment, we will expect to have the, the spin flop uh, transition. So our spins will be perpendicular to the field. And when we start rotating the field in the plane, uh, the spin will uh, rotate with the applied magnetic field. So they will change the position and uh, as for the outer plane angle that uh, remains constant at the in plane, because this is the easy plane for, for some of our domains. So this will lead as expected to a negative amplitude of the SMR. So an antiferromagnetic like SMR with a spin flop field about uh, five uh, Tesla. So this is uh, in disagreement with uh, what we have seen in, in our results uh, experimentally. So what we turned to do was also uh, measure the outer plane angular dependent magneto resistance, because in this way, we can get more information about how different order parameters can rotate uh, with the applied field. For example, in the beta, sc uh, beta scan here, where the field always rotate perpendicular to the current direction, we expect to observe the signal uh, arising from a, a magnetization order parameter. And here, indeed, we observe a sinusoidal modulation, which is a constant in the full range of temperature from 5 to 350K. So here we have a, a positive modulation, which is almost temperature independent. And on the other hand, when we measure the angular dependent magnetization, uh, angular dependent magnetic resistance with the field rotating in the plane, which is always perpendicular to the transverse direction, again, we observe a sinusoidal modulation, but this sinusoidal modulation decreases uh, drastically with increasing temperature and almost disappears about the nil temperature around 200 K. So what we are seeing here is a modulation which arises instead from an antiferromagnetic order parameter. So what we think is that the combination of these two different signals, so a modulation, positive modulation and a negative modulation are summed together in the, in the in-plane angular dependent magnetic resistance. And if we turn to out-of-plane simulations, again, for the theoretical values of, uh, um, of the bulk calcium ferrite, we observe that this do not match with our uh, observed uh, experiment, because in the beta scan, what we have is a, a small movement of the, uh, of the position of the sublattices outside of the plane of only a few degrees, and this will result in almost no uh, modulation with the beta scan. And the same for the outer plane modulation uh, in, the, in the gamma scan, uh, we will not really see any, any modulation here. So it's clear that uh, in the material, in the experimental case, there is some external contribution which is not taken into account in a simple antiferromagnetic model. Uh, to learn something more about this extra contribution, we also uh, perform uh, measurements of the magnetization of the, of the resistance as a function of the applied field. And here we would expect uh, a parabolic uh, uh, increase of the resistance in the case of a pure antiferromagnet, where what we find is something which is more similar to, to two linear behaviors, one at lower fields and one up to higher fields, indicating that there are indeed at least two different contributions to the to the measure angular dependence magnetic resistance in both the single and the multi-domain devices. And in addition, this, uh, the signals are characterized by saturation at high fields. And these fields are, uh, and this would be quite uh, unusual for a saturated ferromagnet where you would expect um, saturation in much lower fields. And so this uh, indicates for us that this uh, positive contribution is more likely to be um, a ferromagnetic in nature. And these measurements also allows us to exclude the uh, effect, uh, an effect from the Hanle magnetic resistance, which again would expect to be uh, parabolic uh, in, in the field dependence. So this brings us, uh, brings me to my conclusions, which is first of all we are able to measure the angular dependence magnetic resistance with alpha, beta, and gamma in the calcium ferrite platinum bilayers. And what we find is that uh, there's always in all the three planes a sinusoidal 
uh, modulation of the magneto resistance, which indicates that uh, the, the nil vector and the magnetization rotate uh, freely with the applied magnetic field. Um, the, the results and especially the sign of this modulation is in contradiction what with what is expected for a pure antiferromagnet. So we hypothesize that there are different contributions to, to the measured angular uh, dependent magnetic resistance. And this can be uh, the SMR effect from the antiferromagnet, as well as a temperature independent positive SMR effect that is most likely due to a paramagnetic contribution. And we think that this uh, uh, paramagnetic contribution uh, can be related to interface effects or uncoupled spins at uh, the crystal uh, domain edges. And in addition, we observe a difference between the single and multi-domain devices where a change of sign of the SMR is observed uh, between low and high temperature only in the large, uh, uh, in the large devices. And this is also not uh, fully understood yet. And with this, I would like to thank all the group members in, in my research group at the University of Groningen and also our collaborators within the same institute. And uh, of course, thank you very much for your attention.